City of Santa Maria of May 6, 2020. Uh, may we please have a roll call? Commissioner Blanco? Here. Commissioner Dickerson? Okay. Unmute yourself. Let me unmute Robert. Robert, you can unmute yourself. There you go, Robert. Here. Commissioner Hernandez? Here. Commissioner Seifert? Here. Chair Lopez? Here. Okay, we have Excuse some... Excuse me, Mr. Chair, if I may interrupt. Yes. Um, I don't see the recording button going. Let me... Could we just confirm <coughs> that's happening? Now I see it. Thank you. There it is. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, we'll go ahead. I, I do have some additional information for this uh, the Zoom platform that we're using tonight. And um, uh, this is a regular public meeting of the Planning Commission and the, and the public has been advised through notification of the posted agenda on, that any items on the, any, any comments on items could be submitted to planning before three o'clock. If you would like to comment, on an item of the agenda, I will call out each public comment period for each item. Please use the raised hand feature and the host will unmute you to speak in the order received. Please state your name for the record. If you're using the phone to call into the meeting, you will use, you'll have to press star nine to raise your hand and identify yourself once you're recognized. Uh, additionally, for the planning commissioners, uh, for this new format, please use the raise hand feature and wait to be acknowledged. During the project presentation, I'll ask to hold all questions until staff is done. After, please use the raise hand feature and wait to be acknowledged. This online meeting will require a roll call for every item, or I'm sorry, every decision of the item. With that said, we'll go ahead and move to uh, the first item, which is, I'm sorry, not the first item, but the approval of the Planning Commission minutes for January 15, 2020. Have the commissioners had a chance to read those items? Yes. And yep. if there if there are yes. no call, sorry, if there are no additional comments, uh, I would entertain a motion uh, for the I move, motion. I move that we approve the GIR fifteen minutes. Okay, w one second, there, Commissioner. Uh, for, for once we once we move to make a motion, I'd like for um, if we can use the raise hand feature. That way, uh, we can unmute the panel and state whether you would like to make a motion, and then we'll ask for a second. And once, once we do get that motion, could you please state your name for the record? And then whoever seconds it, please also state your name. Chair, uh, then, Chair I'm sorry, one, one quick thing for, uh, for Ryan. Um, I, I don't see the uh, raise hand feature on my toolbar. You gotta press the top, Robert. I'm sorry, say that again, Tim? Press the top and it'll drop down. Just put your, put your finger on the top of the screen. I got an iPad, what are you, what are you using? I'm using a PC. I'm using okay. a monitor. Press, press participants at the bottom. And then there's panelists and that's it. I got it. Thank you. Okay. So uh, if, if there are no comments or any changes to the minutes for January 15th, I would entertain a motion. This is Maribel Aguilera. I move that we approve the minutes for January 15, 2020, Planning Commission minutes. Do we have a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Hernandez? Aye. Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Chair Lopez? Aye. The minutes are approved. Uh, next item on our agenda is the public comment period. Uh, this is the period in which uh, persons may speak on items that are not on the regular agenda. All, all persons wishing to speak on agenda items or during this non-agenda public comment portion of the meeting are asked to use the raised hand feature in the Zoom meeting. Each speaker will be limited to a three minute presentation. During public hearings, applicants and the representatives will be given the opportunity to speak first after the staff report is given and questions of the commission have been, ad have been addressed. This is for the non-regular business. Do we have any public comment? So um, I am looking at the attendees and if folks 
on the line if there's anybody that wants to speak on general public comment these are items not on the agenda please raise your hand now and i can unmute you is there anybody who would like to speak on items not on the agenda let's give folks a moment i am not seeing anybody raising their hand and we have 23 attendees okay nor am i Okay, with that, with that said, we will go ahead and move on to the consent calendar. Consent calendar. <clears throat> Each member of the audience may address the commission on any subject within the commission's business. I'm sorry, I, I take that back <laughs> on the consent calendar. The consent calendar is approved with one motion. These items are read only on the request of the commission members. Should anyone, including members of the public, wish to discuss or disapprove any item that must be dropped from a blanket motion and considered as a separate item? Do the commissioners have any items they wish to pull? We have Commissioner Seifert and Commissioner Blanco raising their hand. Okay. So Commissioner uh, Seifert is first. Commissioner Seifert? Yes. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I am working with the applicant uh, on the new love apartments currently. Uh, hope to keep working with him. I will be recusing myself from that item on my consent calendar. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Blanco. Uh, yes, Chair Lopez, thank you. Um, so I'll be recusing myself from item one, Centennial Plaza. I also have a, a, a working relationship with the applicant. Okay. Uh, I would like to pull item number four uh, as well. So. Uh, we'll pull items one, two, and four. And uh, Heather, is is the is the requirement that those that are recusing themselves from the individual item step away from the uh, their computer? Because they're on the consent agenda, um, they do not would not normally be required to leave the room. So I don't think they virtually need to leave the room either. When we get to um, the other items, they would need to virtually leave the room, which means mute themselves and step away from the camera. Okay. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and pull items one, and we will vote on items, I'm sorry, one, one and four, and vote on items two and three. Is, is that correct, Ryan? No. No. So do we have three items we're pulling? Yes. Yes. Maybe yeah. let's do each one individually as a roll call. Okay, so we'll go to item number one, which is the Centennial Square permit amendment at the southwest corner of Miller Street and Plaza Drive. Do we need a motion? Yes, we will need a motion to approve the, that item on the consent calendar. I, 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 move, I move that we, we approve uh, the consent calendar item uh, number one. Okay, and I'll Maribel, note that. Maribel Aguilera seconds. Okay. All those in favor, we'll have a roll call. I'm sorry, we'll have a roll call. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Have we checked if there's any public comment on item number one? We have not. I thought we did. I did. I thought we did public comment as a for a consent calendar as a whole, or was that just public comment? It may have been um, public comment. I don't know that. Can, it was clear. Sorry, guys. Can we push pause on the agenda here? Um, we have some folks saying that the Zoom link is not working. So okay. Kathleen, can we see if Beth um, can, I I'm, think we should pause the meeting and take a break and make That's sure fine. that that Zoom, that the link is working before we continue. Um, Heather, what do you think? Um, certainly we can take a pause and and try and figure that out. I, I know we have a bunch of participants. So I'm okay, not so now I just had another person say it is working. So um, I think maybe those who are not able to, it's an issue on their end because I just received word that they're able to log in. And um, so, for example, um, Suzanne, Suzanne Singh just let me know that she's on using the link and she can hear and see just fine. So. Right. I think we're okay. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Sorry about that, you guys. So I do okay. think we should ask for public comment on each one as we move through them. Okay, so we'll go ahead and, and open 
item number one, Commissioner Seifert will recuse himself. We have a... Uh, no, I'm, I'm recusing num item number two. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Blanco will recuse himself from item number one. And may we have a staff report? That this was a oh, consent items, no staff report. Um, you're just gonna, but, but we're pulling it, right? You're pulling it to vote separately. The items for okay. all the consent items, the information is posted on the agenda for everybody to review. We don't have a separate presentation, so you're just gonna call out each consent item and do a separate roll call okay. for each item. Okay. Moving back to item number one of the consent calendar, the Centennial Square permit amendment at the southwest corner of Miller Street and Plaza Drive. Commissioner Blanco will uh, be recusing himself. May we please have a roll call. Uh, Commissioner Dickerson. Aye, but I, I thought we needed public comment. I thought that's what we were waiting for, Heather. Yes, if Brian could check and see if yeah, let me see comment, if and then one can I'm I see twenty five attendees and no hands raised for consent to item number one. Okay. okay. Um aye. Commissioner Hernandez? Aye. Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Chair Lopez. Aye. We'll move on to consent item number two, which is the New Love East Apartments uh, Amendment Permit at 575 East New Love Drive. Commissioner Seifert will recuse himself. Are there any public comments? Let me check. Um, this is item two on the consent agenda. If folks in the public have comment on that, would you raise your hand? I am I'm not seeing any. No. Thank you, Ryan. With that said, I'll entertain uh, a motion. I'll move. I'll second. Commissioner Maribel Dickerson made the, uh, made the motion. It was seconded by Commissioner Maribel. May we please Hernandez. have a roll call? I'm sorry. Commissioner Hernandez. Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Commissioner Hernandez? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Chair Lopez? Aye. Move to consent item number three, which is the JLC Commercial Building Plan Development Permit Amendment at 1116 West Enos Drive. Are there any public comments for this item? So let me check for everybody. So out of, I see 26 attendees and still no hands raised for this consent item. Thank you, Ryan. We'll go ahead and entertain a motion for this item. To approve the item three. Commissioner Schreiber. Seconded by Commissioner Hernandez. May we please have a roll call? Commissioner Seifert. Aye. Commissioner Hernandez. Aye. Commissioner Blanco. Aye. Commissioner Dickerson. Aye. Chair Lopez. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, last item is the item I wanted to pull for uh, the Westgate Marketplace Plan Development Permit Amendment at the northwest corner of South Blosser Road and West Battles Road. Uh, last year when this item came before us, there was, uh, I had asked a question regarding the landscaping at the center of, of, the, of Blosser Road. Uh, it hasn't been improved. The project was approved initially in 2007. So it's been 13 years since that, that has been um, entitled yet that planning planting is not is, has not begun. I, I did see in the staff report that one of the items had of uh, the condition of approval for the extension was that additional landscaping or landscaping had to be done and there was uh, something about the development fees being paid. I just want to know that when we can expect that planting to be done in this in the center median. It, it's been like that for 12 years. Yeah, um, I hear you, and um, at this time, we don't, I don't have, I haven't heard of plans until a development happens on that property. Um, I'm going to look, it looked like, um, I think the applicant's representative is on. Um, I thought I saw a hand raised, so to see if they wanted to weigh in. Um, if the applicant's on, please raise your hand and if you want to weigh in on this um, to answer the commissioner's question. 
No, I'm not seeing them right now. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm going to unmute the applicant to weigh on on this, if that's okay, Chair? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, Brian, you are on. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. Um, Brian Schwartz from Planning Concepts. Uh, I realize that the project has been, um, uh, that front portion has been vacant for some time. They did do the, the rear portion of the project with the apartments. They have had several interested parties, including Starbucks and another a number of other tenants that they thought they'd be moving forward with. Unfortunately, um, they, they never got those deals completed. Perhaps that was some of the the air that may have been sucked out of a little bit of that west side Blosser corridor from Enos Ranchos. Um, but they still have a very valuable entitlement that they're using to market the project and hoping to move forward very soon with um, a tenant and a, and a, and a deal with, with a new tenant. Thank you, Brian. I, my, my concern though, Brian, was that that center medium planting, all the stub outs are there, all the, the infrastructure is there for, for that landscape, but it's, it's been 12 years. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I mean, I, uh, last time we spoke on this project last year uh, for the extension, there was, uh, you know, I, I brought it up and, and it, it just kind of went away. And I, I'm just, you know, I passed by there a week and a half ago and the weeds are three feet high at this in, in the center of, of Blossom Road. So uh, I, I, I almost would like to continue this to a study session and, and, and see what we can do to get that center meeting planted. I, I, I just think it's, it's, it's time. Yeah, we can also, we can look into also if that's now part of the landscape maintenance district for the city, if they're paying into that, and that that is part of that landscape maintenance district. Um, I'd like to give you a an answer as to, yeah, they, they will do that right now. I mean, if that is something that would be, I haven't checked with the applicant, so I'm a little bit hesitant to make a, um, a decision on their behalf as to when they would plant that median, if it would be effective immediately. But um, uh, if I can weigh in, Chair um, Ryan Hofstetter, Planning Manager, um, we could work with Rec and Parks and the applicant too. Um, I I didn't have this question ahead of time, so I wasn't able to get with. Scott Christian as well. He's another person with Rec and Parks who has a lot of experience with this and I would want to consult with him on that and he's not on the meeting. Okay. And we also have Lori right. Tamura who's raising her hand as well and let me know if you'd like to hear from her too. Yes, please. Okay, I'm gonna... And then Commissioner Dickerson has a, I believe has a comment afterwards. But... Okay, do you want me to do, who uh, would you like me to... Lori first? Yes, and then we'll go to Commissioner Dickerson. Okay, all right. Okay, I think, Lori, I, I think you're on on my end. You have to unmute uh, yourself. Um, thank you. Uh, Lori Smart with Urban Planning Concepts. Uh, just to expand on what Brian has provided, uh, you know, this uh, is long history with this property, uh, and um, it is important to note that not only did the um, heritage project uh, get annexed into the landscaping district, but also Vela del Sol. Uh, so there, there are ongoing funds moving into the parks department on this. So I think the suggestion that uh, Ryan Huffetter made in regards to working with the parks department, this may be an opportunity that we should get some um, interim planting in there, maybe not the full landscaping. Um, but we also have Area 5B coming forward and uh, on the other side of the street. So I think that in the combination of those two projects, we may be seeing more activity along Glossa Road and getting that improvement done. Okay. Th thank you, Lori. Com Commissioner Dickerson? Can we go to Commissioner Dickerson? Just, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with... Uh, Chair Lopez, I, I think probably there's enough complexity here that you want to take it off of the 
consent calendar and we're not prepared to actually vote on it now with the with the various elements that are in there so I, I would also like to see that taken back to a study session where we can discuss uh, all the elements that uh, are of concern and uh, especially you know, as, as Brian pointed out you know the he can't uh, because they weren't aware that these uh, concerns were brought up he uh, have the authority to you know to to agree to one thing or another so we should probably just pull that one any other commissioners have a comment on this item seeing no hands raised okay i i would entertain a motion on this I'll go ahead and move the. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. Do you want to? I I don't know if I was doing that. I was going to. I'm not sure what the motion is, Chair. Do you a motion? The, the, I'm sorry. The, the motion would well. Whoever makes the motion, I I would like to see this continue to a study session to iron out when we could we can see something happen in the center median on Blosser Road, since this has been since 20, 2007 that this was entitled and. 13 years later, we still have the same stub outs and uh, infrastructure just there for the for the median. Okay, so uh, I would make a motion to move this item to a, a, a next available study session so that we can discuss this. Excuse me, um, Mr. Chair, I'm a little um, concerned about the motion. Ms. Hostetter, wouldn't we need to come back with a resolution for denial or are we okay just continuing this to a study session rather than another meeting? Um, how about we continue this to a hearing since this is okay. a public hearing and it's been noticed um, we can continue to the next hearing and let me pull up my my calendar here. Um, May 20th. Let's see, May 20th would be the next hearing date. Commissioner Seifert, can you um, revise your, your, your motion? I would like to make a motion that we move this item to the uh, next available date or hearing, which is again, the- May 20th. The 20th? Yes, uh, May 20th. May 20th of this month, uh, that's my motion. Is there a second? I'll second. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Seifert. W one more time, Commissioner Seifert. Aye. Am I muted? Commissioner Dickerson. Aye. Commissioner okay. Hernandez. Aye. Commissioner Blanco. Aye. Chair Lopez. Aye. Thank you. The motion carries. Um, we will now move on to the the regular public hearing portion of our agenda. I would like to make a, a few announcements with respect to um, the public hearings. For the items, for the hearing items on the agenda, we will begin each item with an introduction by the chair, which is myself, and I will turn it over to staff for a presentation. Once staff's presentation is completed, I will open it to the commissioners to ask any questions of staff? Commissioners, please raise your hand and you will be unmuted one at a time to ask your questions. After all questions are answered, we will open it up to the applicant who will be on as an attendee. Please raise your hand and the host will unmute you to make any comments on your item. I will then ask commissioners, I will then ask if commissioners have any questions of the applicant during this time. Please raise your hand and the host will unmute you. Once we have asked, Questions from the applicant, I will open the item to public comment. For the public, please wait to raise your hand after I have called for public comment on the item and the host will unmute you in the order received. When public comment has commenced, I will bring it back to the commission for any final comments or questions and commissioners, please raise hand to speak. When it is time for a motion, I will call for a motion and a second. The host will unmute the PC, unmute the planning commission at that time for a motion and a second. The clerk will then be unmuted to go through a roll call vote on each item. With that said, 
Uh, we are going to make a change to the uh, agenda. We will go ahead and here. Item number. Item number six. I'm sorry, Ryan. So we were we, going to. We have item number five is the first public hearing item on the agenda. That's right. Dutch Brothers. And then um, switching the last two items, that's six and seven, because we have a commissioner that uh, needs to recuse himself. And so we wanted to do the item where they needed to recuse himself last, and that's fairway. So we would just be swapping six, six and, and seven. seven. Okay. Thank and you. Commissioner Dickerson has his hand raised. So um, I'm sorry, it's just a technical thing. Should you... Um Put Miss Tamora back in the attendees, or she does at this point does she stay? I think I think she stays. Um, attendees are all muted until I they raise a hand and I unmute them. So as far as what happens on the screen, uh, who is located in which box, um, I don't have control over that. Are we good to go on item number five? Okay. So we're switching items just so everybody knows. Um, and it's clear that um, item number six, which is fairway commercial, is going to be the last item on the agenda. Yes. U-Haul mini storage will become item number six. With that said, we'll go ahead and, and start the first item of the public hearings, which is item number five, Dutch Brothers Coffee Plan Development Permit at the 1700 block of North Broadway. May we please have a staff presentation. Thank you, Chair, members of the Commission. This is a review of a plan development permit, BD 2019-0012, for the Dutch Brothers Coffee uh, to construct a drive through coffee kiosk. And before you go too far, I'd like to introduce, uh, make sure everybody's, this is Frank Albro, a senior planner with the city, who's the project manager for the project. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Frank. Right. Uh, this project was initially presented to the Planning Commission at a study session on February 6th of this year. Uh, well, let me share my screen. So the... Hold on just one moment. So the location of the 9.9 .9 acre site, excuse me, is on the 1700 block of North Broadway, uh, and it is south of the O'Reilly's auto, uh, auto facility. Uh, spotlight that there. Here's the O'Reilly's. And there is a 7-Eleven at the corner of North Broadway and East Grant. You can see the site is vacant. This site was the subject of a subdivision map uh, just a couple of years ago. So here's some photographs of the site. Uh, the first photograph in the upper left is looking north from an alleyway that bounds the southern side of the site. The site is vacant and the O'Reilly's auto parts store is in the background. And to the right of the photo, is the River Ranch multifamily uh, development. And on the lower right, you see the view essentially from the O'Reilly's uh, building. Here's some si views of the site from across the street. Uh, one looking southeast, the other looking northeast. And I, when I say across the street, I mean across Broadway. So the project consists of an 856 foot uh, square foot Dutch Brothers coffee shop. It is a exclusively a kiosk, so there is no indoor seating. The site will, of course, include all the uh, site improvements, parking lot, refuse enclosure, landscape. The uh, floor area of the uh, kiosk is shown here, the floor plan, I should say. And you'll notice there is no 
like I said, no indoor seating. Uh, it's exclusively for the staff to prepare the beverages and um, limited food that they provide. Uh, one question that did come up during the study session was concerning the restroom and whether the public would have access to the restroom. And the, the uh, applicant did revise the floor plan. So the one restroom that's provided for the building will be available for not only the employees, but also customers. So here's some renderings of the site. And uh, this building was modeled after the Dutch Brothers prototype building. However, staff and the applicant worked together to modify it to better fit within the Entrada specific plan goals of having the muted colors and the earth tones and so forth. Uh, the main portion of the building will be stucco and the tower element, uh, which is where the drive through window is, has a wood uh, cladding. And there's also a tile wainscot around the base of the building. Here you can see the site plan. And I'll note there is an alleyway that was part and actually done prior to the uh, subdivision map that went through a couple of years ago. Uh, that alleyway will be improved by the applicant. Uh, as you can see, the site configuration places the building closest to the street. And a thing that is notable about this drive through versus others we've seen recently is that the drive through does not surround the building. The drive through is entirely on the east side of the building. Therefore, there's no obstruction, no drive through obstruction from pedestrians accessing the patio from the North Broadway sidewalk. This drive through is also unique because there will not be any speaker system and uh, order boards and so forth. Uh, the operation of Dutch Brothers relies on staff that will be waiting for cars to pull up in the drive through lanes and taking their orders through a point of service system. Um, the vehicles have two lanes to start their drive through process, it narrows down to one lane. Uh, but you can see here, there's what Dutch Brothers is re referring to as an escape lane. So if there is somebody waiting at the window for their order, and an order comes up that is for a car in the queue, uh, the staff will bring that uh, client or the customer their order, and they'll be able to exit the drive through and not be held up by the person waiting at the window. So that is, is fairly unique. Uh, here you can see the parking field. Uh, there is the refuse enclosure towards the back of the site. And these areas here will be used as landscaping and drainage. There is a drainage that comes from the site to the east uh, across into the site and the uh, basin is included as part of the site development. And here you can see the landscape plan. Um, I've highlighted the trees in green. Our Rec and Parks Department um, is pleased with the layout of the trees along Broadway. Additionally, there's additional trees throughout the site, including in the center drive through uh, island area. And I will mention that um, I did receive two phone calls from gentlemen who were unable to log into the Zoom meeting uh, just prior to the, uh, the public hearing starting. Um, one was the owner of the 7-Eleven at the corner, and uh, he is opposed to this project. His concern is that there are already too many drive throughs in the area. Uh, and with the Starbucks that is across the street from this location, he feels that there is too much um, competition for the coffee business and there won't be enough coffee business for all these, these uh, sellers of coffee. Um, his name was George Warrich, and I apologize if I'm not pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, the second call I got was from uh, David Continenti, 
and he is the 7-Eleven district manager. And he just wanted to reiterate uh, the owner's concerns about too many drive throughs too many coffee locations. And he did also mention that uh, there'd be uh, too much traffic. But I did want to read that into the record on behalf of those two folks that did call in. And I apologize to them that they weren't able to uh, participate through the Zoom meeting. So in conclusion of my presentation, uh, our recommendation is that the Planning Commission by motion approve plan development permit PD 2019-12. And I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Frank. That was a great presentation. Uh, Ryan, uh, if, if our um, uh, questions are, are coming from the, the, the commissioners, are they all muted at this point? Yeah, so I do have, com I do have questions. Um, I have a hand raised from Commissioner, Commissioner Seifert. Seifert. Uh, so first, so I will unmute him and then to Commissioner Blanco. Okay, thank you. So, Commissioner Seifert. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good to see you, Frank. Hey, um, I, I'm really just more of an informational question. Um, when they came to us the first time, the bathroom was a private bathroom, and now it's a public bathroom. And that was that done on their account, or is that a public, is that our codes? Uh, is that something that we, uh, as a city, that's what we require? Uh, Commissioner Seifert, Chair. <laughs> Um, the discussion never made it that far in terms of whether or not it was a requirement that they provide this restroom. The applicant merely said that they would do it and they changed the floor plan. So I apologize, I don't have that answer whether it is a code requirement, um, but the applicant has agreed to um, have that restroom open to the public. Thank you, Frank, that's it. All right, let me move on. We have Commissioner Blanco who has his hand raised. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Frank. Um, this is Esau. Uh, question I have is, uh, I realize there's no indoor seating or tables. However, with the patio that's outside, would they be allowed to, if they wanted to, put outdoor seating, tables, or anything like that? Yes, um, that is their intention, that they will have some seating out in this patio area. Um, the parking calculation has been based off not only the square footage of the building, but also the square foot area of the parking as potential customer seating area. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Blanco. Uh, Commissioner Hernandez. A... I'm sorry. Go, how many... Go ahead, Ryan. I'm sorry. How many bathrooms are they going to have available? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, it is only the one bathroom right here. Uh, this was all that they had proposed originally. And um, I believe since our building division is allowed us to move forward with only the one bathroom, I'm certain that this one single bathroom meets the minimum code requirements. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Frank, Frank, I remember looking at this a little bit after that study session because I think I brought up the question of a bathroom available to the public. It's either in the city's municipal code or the uh, you know, or the California plumbing code that requires a facility for the public. Uh, but a building isn't here to, to chime in on that, and, and they would have approved that uh, based on any requir code requirement. So anyway, just to shed a little bit of light on that. Are there any other comments from commissioners or questions? If I may add, um, I see that in the attendees is the applicant. So the applicant is attending this meeting via Zoom. Okay, thank you, Frank. Uh, which leads us to opening the meeting to the public. Uh, again, those that wish to be, to ask a question or make a comment can raise their hand. Uh, we will unmute you once uh, the order has come in. If all right in order for me to do that um i need to be able to see all the attendees so frank can you unshare your screen so i can see all the attendees and manage um the attendees okay so i'm on attendees and um chair if now is the time where you like to oh let's see you want to hear from the applicant is yeah, that right I, yeah i don't know who the applicant is i do see the okay if of... you can raise oh they're raising their hand i'm going to unmute them now go ahead mr bernard 
Hi, this is uh, Braden Bernards. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Braden. I'm with Coal Valley Partners. Uh, we are the applicant and the developer on this project. Um, first, thanks for taking the time and everybody uh, in this uh, unorthodox setting. Um, and thanks to Frank and the planning staff for working with us over the last few months and putting together that staff report. Um, he touched most of the major things on the building design. We really kind of use the Entrada specific plan as the, the primary guidelines. Um, using the earth tones and the brick veneer and the stucco and, and the, the prototype is a blue metal building and we didn't feel that that fit very well with with the Entrada plan. Um, and then as, as you addressed per the earlier comments, um, we did add a public bathroom um, to meet the requirements and it helped you know, provide more of a public service area with the patio space. Um, similarly on the site design, we, we pretty much saw I and I were planning the whole time to keep the building on the street and to provide um, the drive through behind the building so as to keep a nice frontage. Um, it also helps relieve possible issues on the right of way and we're working with Caltrans to, to get the access permit through as we have more stacking um, with the way we've designed as opposed to having any possible issues spilling the drive through queue onto the right of way. So we feel like we mitigated that pretty well. Um, other than that, I think, I think Fred hit, Frank hit all the major notes and I'm happy to take any questions uh, should, they, should they arise. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. Does uh, the commission have any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, Ryan, we'll go ahead and open it up to those in the public that wish to, to be heard. Okay, so members of the public, if folks can raise their hand if they would like to speak on this item. And just a reminder, if you're on your phone, hit star nine, and that will raise your hand. Uh, so let's give just a second here, just in case those folks were able to get on the phone. I'm seeing... 25 attendees right now and, and I'm not seeing any raised hands. Uh, let's just give them a moment just in case. I'm not seeing any raised hands, Chair. Thank you, Ryan, nor am I. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, bring this back to the commission. I'll go ahead and uh, close the meeting and uh, entertain any com comments or discussions from the, from the commission. Our motion. If Commissioner Seifert uh, raised his hand first, I'm gonna unmute. Uh, yes, hello. Um, I, I just wanted to address the 7-Eleven folks on those, on those two items. Uh, we did look at this in study session and we discussed a number of the issues about the drive throughs and uh, the fact that there's more than one coffee location in that. Uh, the Dutch brothers don't have any uh, problem with their business model as far as who's next to them or where they are. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in uh, pretty much uh, capitalism and the, the best the best product will win out. So uh, I think it's a good plan. I like the way that they set it up. It's a little different than what we've seen. I mean, the building in the front and a escape route. Uh, I've been to a few Dutch brothers uh, up in Chico. Um, uh, I, I, I feel I could support the project. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Seeker. Any other comment or question from the commission? Motion. Uh, uh, Commissioner Dickerson um, raising his hand. I'm going to unmute. Um, I, uh, I agree with uh, Commissioner Seifert. Um, I, I've looked at this uh, this project and this plan. I first of all, I, I like uh, um, I like the way they have the the, the uh, vehicles coming and going. Um, and how they're going to be taking orders. It looks like it's going to be very efficient. Um, I, I'm, I'm a pretty firm believer in, in commercial Darwinism as far as these things go. I mean, there's going to be some, some exceptions to that, but uh, um, competition is going to be good for the public um, overall, and, uh, um, and I would hope that there's enough coffee out there. Geez, I would hope there's enough coffee out there for everybody. So... Uh, Anyway, I, I have no problems with this, and, uh, um, and at the appropriate time, I would certainly be willing to make the motion. Thank you, Commissioner Dickerson. We have Commissioner Hernandez um, next. Yes, so we asked a lot of questions at study session on this project. I think it's a really good project. I don't think that we have enough coffee places in that side of town. There isn't a lot of retail 
and or or restaurants. So I think this is only going to help bring more customers to the area. And I think it'll help 7-Eleven instead of, you know, just when people drop in for coffee, people who buy 7-Eleven coffee will continue to buy 7-Eleven coffee. So I don't think that's going to be um, a major issue. I think it's a good project, especially in today's um, climate. The drive through coffee place is the way to go. So I think this is a really good project. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. And we have Commissioner Blanco next. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just, just a few things. I'll kind of reiterate with what um, a few folks were saying about basically the, the, the layout of the site and uh, circulation. That's, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, you know, the, the ability to be able to stack uh, cars internally and not spill onto Broadway would be really, really good. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, coffee, I think, you know, every town has a lot of coffee shops. So I don't I don't see why we would uh, try to limit the number of coffee shops in, in a certain area. Um, and I certainly don't think there's that many on the north end either. So um, I, I think it is an attractive project. It looks like they did a very good job. And, um, yeah, it's a, it, it looks very good to me. Thank you, Commissioner Blanco. I, I agree. I, I think having more options in the north end of town is, is a good thing. Uh, Competition is a good thing. Uh, the building looks great. The, the thought that went behind the traffic uh, circulation is, is also uh, a, a, good, a good job on the part of the applicant. And staff, Frank, the great presentation. Uh, uh, I, I, I could support this project. With, with that said, I would entertain a motion or comment, additional comments. Commissioner Dickerson raised his hand first. And then Commissioner Seifert. Um, I'll go ahead and move that the Planning Commission by motion approve Plan Development Permit PD 2019-0012. Do we have a second? I second the motion. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can you please state your name, Commissioner Seifert, uh, just, uh, just so we have it on record? Yes, sir. Commissioner Seifert. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Com Commissioner Hernandez? Right, let me unmute. Commissioner Hernandez? I, I think you're muted, Commissioner Hernandez. Hang on. <laughs> Is that on our end? I keep clicking. I hope we're not both clicking it at the same time. I'm going to unmute you. I'm clicking unmute and it's still muted. <laughs> there we go. Hi. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. <laughs> and Chair Lopez. Hi. The motion passes. Um, thank you and, and good luck. Good luck. Okay, moving on to our reconfigured agenda item. We'll go ahead and move to the U-Haul mini storage and office relocation conditional use permit at 2875 Santa Maria Way. May we please have a staff report. Thank you, Commissioner, or Chair Lopez. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, let me share my screen. This is Alejandra Alvarez, our planner with the city and project manager. Thank you, Ryan. Um, okay, so as Ryan mentioned, I am the project manager um, that's been working on U-Haul mini storage and office phase two, um, which is located at 2875 Santa Maria Way. Okay. So the project site is the old is located at the old Kmart building, which is adjacent to the southern border of the city limits. Um, it is surrounded by Orchid Expressway um, to the west, uh, Santa Maria Way to the east, and we have Miller Street to the north. We also have uh, Mission Creek Plaza and Mission Creek Apartments to the east and the community health center to the north. The uh, project site is located within the C2 general commercial zone with a plan development overlay. 
Um, the proposed mini storage use is actually not listed under the conditional uses of the C2 zone. However, the conditional use permit does allow the planning commission discretion over uses that are similar to those listed as long as they are not more obnoxious or detrimental to the health of the public and are found by the planning commission to be compatible um, with adjoining land uses. This project is designed to be compatible with those adjoining land uses um, by locating all of the mini storage uses entirely within the existing building. And in addition, um, to minimize conflicts that may occur between um, the proposed mini storage use and the surrounding residential and commercial uses, the project is conditioned to operate within the city's established noise and site lighting regulations um, and also to limit hours of operation of the mini storage use. Um, a little bit more about the abuting properties to the uh, project site. You have R1 single family residential um, homes to the west and the general commercial plan development overlay continues to the east as well as R3 high density residential um, zone with a plan development overlay. So a little bit of background on this project. You saw this project back in June and a hearing in, on June 2019, 2019 under conditional use permit 2019-8. Uh, which was U-Haul phase one. It was approved at that time. And what that approval allowed was the display of the rental trucks and trailers in their designated spaces. Um, part of the building was to be used as front office and retail and also allowed for enhanced landscaping. There were amended conditions at that hearing, um, which involved ADA requirements, shielded LED site lighting and parking lot resurfacing. And that was due to the fact that the applicant um, made a comment that this would come back at, um, for further development of the site under different phases and other permits. Which brings us to phase two. Um, and prior to this hearing, it was brought to two study sessions, one on January 16th of 2020 and the other one on February 20th, 2020. Um, during the first study session, the conversation of this project revolved around the design and visibility of at that time what was being proposed as five outdoor mini storage unit buildings in the northwest corner of the site. Um, one concern that was brought up was the um, completion of the conditions of approval um, that were issued under phase one. And the commissioners um, suggested that the applicant return to a future study session with examples of U-Haul's um, marketing graphics and color and materials board um, to discuss that further. Um, during, they did take all those comments that were issued during the first study session and they did come back for a second one on February 20th where they removed the proposed outdoor mini storage units um, and have now completely um, dedicated all mini storage units to the interior of the building. They addressed phase, the phase one conditions of approval by um, working on the landscape, enhancing landscape planters, as well as restriping uh, restriping and restoring the site. One comment that was made um, during this study session was the compatibility between the colors and materials that were being proposed in the marketing graphics um, that U-Haul is known for. Um, at, that, at that time, the commissioners did suggest to bring this project to a hearing rather than another uh, study session. Um, here we have a few graphics of the existing conditions. The left picture here shows uh, the parking lot um, with, with, as you can see, is, it is restriped. Um, you are looking at the north elevation of the building and the U-Haul trucks are parked in their designated areas. The right picture shows the enhanced landscape planters that run along Orchid Expressway. Um, continuing on some existing conditions, the left picture shows the um, southwest, or I'm sorry, southeast corner of the lot looking north. Um, so Santa Maria Way is running on the right hand side of this picture. Um, and you can continue to see the enhanced landscaping as well as the restriping and slurring of the site. The right picture here, we have the um, 
northeast corner of the building, which is where they will be proposing the new retail and office space. Um, and we'll see more detail on that in the following slides. Okay, so diving into the details of phase two, um, here we have the site plan. Um, there is one existing building on the site on that southern portion. Um, again, as you can see, there are uh, landscape planners running along Orchid Expressway, um, Santa Maria Way. There's going to be three access points um, for customers, and they have added uh, landscape planters along the eastern side of the building, which again you will see in more detail in further slides. Okay, so the floor plan, plan of the existing building is. Um, mostly composed of the mini storage units all inside. Um, the west portion that's labeled U-Box self-storage is a um, amenity that U-Haul uh, offers as pod-like units for their customers and for their larger belongings. Um, and then on that north um, east corner, uh, like mentioned in a previous slide, is where they are proposing the retail and office space. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention about the floor plan that is unique is this truck area unloading space right in the middle. There are going to be bay doors where um, and where customers can put in their car, can roll in their car, unload their belongings, have easier access to their mini storage. Um, so the following slides are going to be a few elevations of the project, of uh, the proposed project. Here we have a north elevation, so looking south from the parking lot. Um, the applicant is proposing ledgestone veneer as accents um, all throughout the elevations, including on those big corners. Um, and then continuing here we have the center of the building where in previous um, submittals that you have seen, you have seen three of these architectural um, marketing graphics um, that are pretty common for U-Haul to have at their locations. Um, in previous submittals, you've seen three of these panels lined up against one another, and they have taken your comments from the last study session and then reduced it down to one panel. And here we just have a closer look at those bay doors that were mentioned on the floor plan uh, slide regarding that interior bay for their customers to unload their items. The top graphic is the west elevation, so the elevation adjacent to Orchid Expressway. Um, you'll see another one of those uh, graphic panels. Um, again, this, this side also contained three of these panels, but have now been it has now been reduced down to one, and the stone veneer continues to this side. And the bottom graphic is just the backside of that building that is adjacent to the city limit and residential homes. Lastly, we have the east elevation. This is going to be adjacent to Santa Maria Way. In previous submittals, you had seen uh, faux orange mini storage doors on this side, which again is very common for U-Haul to have um, as their marketing plan but they did take your comments into consideration and removed those doors and have now instead included um, landscaping planners here to um, enhance this elevation. Okay, so just going into landscape plans, this is a big site. Um, so the landscape plans are divided up a little bit. Please refer to the key plan um, just so that you know what area I'm referring to on this site. Um, so this area is B1 and B2, which runs uh, along Orchid Expressway, they have included a line of trees um, all along that uh, side of the site. Here we have area A, so the northeast corner. You're going to continue to see that trend of a line of trees along Santa Maria Way. Continuing to, uh, to the area C, um, again, you see the line of trees up against Santa Maria Way, and in more detail, those planners that are being proposed on the east elevation of the building. With that, um, staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission, by motion, approve conditional use permit U-2019-21 and plan development Permit PD 2022. Um, and that concludes staff 
presentation. However, before moving forward, we did receive um, a nine different uh, comments and format of letters that I would like to read out loud uh, for the record. Um, they are available on our website in full. I will be summarizing these. Um, so the first letter was submitted by Joseph Cahill. Um, in his letter, Joseph mentions that he believes this is a prime retail location um, and that local neighborhoods are opposed to this redevelopment and is concerned about the a zoning of this property being C2 general commercial and um, this being a conflicting use. The next letter was submitted by Colleen uh, Kai Kendall. Um, Colleen mentions that she is a neighbor of this site and she also expresses concern about uh, another storage facility being placed in this area and that the type of business um, doesn't serve a purpose for the people that are neighboring um, this site. The third letter was submitted by uh, Pat Cusack. Um, Pat outlines here four reasons why this is not the correct site for U-Haul, those being that it's not zoned for that uh, use, that it's not a good fit for uh, the traffic in this area, um, and that there are other facilities, other self-storage facilities in the city um, that are brand new, as well as that it, this is a prime location for retail and mixed use with potential for a housing component that the community needs. The fourth letter was submitted by Mark Betts. Um, Mark echoes a lot of these previous um, letters where he states that the area would be better served as a retail or a combination of retail stores. Letter number five was submitted by Kirk O'Keefe. Um, Kirk mentions in his letter that this would be an eyesore um, in this area of town and that he would like to see something more along the lines of restaurants and shops with uh, some aesthetic eye appeal. Letter number six was submitted by Shane Conway. Uh, Sean uh, mentions in his letter that um, this is not an appropriate location and that it's very visible and that, um, again, would be an eyesore for this area of town and that there are other locations within the city limits that would be uh, better suited for this use. Letter number seven was submitted by Krista Mather. Um, Krista and her husband are not in favor for this. Um, used to go into the old Kmart building. They would like to see something more along coffee shops like Starbucks or a few restaurants. Um, on this site. Um, the eighth letter was submitted by Natalia Fuggs. Um, in her letter, she inc uh, includes her opinion uh, that this, again, not an appropriate location for a self-storage facility um, and that this they could use more restaurants or shopping um, in this area, though she is in agreement with cleaning up the building and making it look newer. And finally, the last letter was submitted by Uh-oh, Alejandra cut out for a moment. She was on the last letter from uh, yeah. Sham Duckworth. Sham Duckworth, yes. Um, I can jump in here for her. Um, Sham Duckworth, um, similar comments uh, to the others, um, not in support of the project. Um, and all, all of these letters have issues with the use of the space, um, which is zone commercial as mini storage. So I just want to point out that all of these letters have been sent to all the planning commissioners and um, are posted on our website. And I would like to mention um, one of the folks that submitted a letter, Colleen, um, Hui Kindle, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your, your name wrong. Um, I talked to her on the phone and um, mentioned that we would be reading her whole letter. However, because we got so many letters, um, we decided that we weren't going to read through each one in entirety, but they've been sent to all the commissioners and posted on our website. Uh, so I just wanted to, to highlight that. And it looks like Alejandra's back, and I'm going to turn it over to her to see if she has any closing comments or anything. 
I apologize about the connection issues here. Um, I just want to end by saying I am available for any questions um, and just echoing that what Ryan just said that all of these letters are posted on our website. Um, I know that this was a brief outline of what they all contained. Thank you, Alejandra. Um, I wanted to ask the commission if they had any ex parte communication with uh, members of the applicants. Uh, I, I actually did speak with Mr. Tom uh, Martinez a while back uh, just uh, to kind of get a, a, a a flavor of what what was what we would be seeing for the uh, upcoming meeting. Um, I never did actually see a set of plans, but uh, we, we did chat about it for a bit. So we have three commissioners raising their hands. I'm going to start with Commissioner Seifert. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Ryan. Uh, I talked with Pat Cusack on the phone, and I've talked with Tom Martinez about this project. And uh, Commissioner Dickerson. I talked to uh, Pat Cusack uh, about this uh, this project. And Commissioner Hernandez. I received an email and communication from Pat Cusack. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Hernandez. Uh, uh, Commissioner Dickerson, you had another question? Oh, sorry, I thought I, I, thought I started your hand up. With that said, I'll go ahead and get this back to the planning commission for any comments or questions uh, for the staff. Commissioner Hernandez has her hand up. Yeah, I do have a, qu a question for staff that I'd like to address regarding the zoning questions made in a lot of these letters regarding the C2 versus the CM. Could you elaborate on that? Yes. Uh, so when we looked at the zoning um, and specifically the code language, um, the code does allow the commissioner's discretion to choose uses that aren't specifically listed under that part of the code. Um, again, um, the language that is used is that the planning commission um, has discretion over uses that are similar to those listed as long as they're not more obnoxious or detrimental to the health of the public and are found by the Planning Commission to be compatible with adjoining land uses. Thank you, Alejandra. Any other questions or comments from com the commission members? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and uh, open the public, open the meeting to the public. Is we the have applicant, to hear from the applicant, I think. Right, uh, we'll, we'll open it up to the applicant. Is, is he online? Or are so they online? I'm seeing um, uh, Mr. Martinez is on with his hand raised, so I'm gonna unmute him and um, give me one moment. Mr. Martinez, you're on. Yes, Tom Martinez, 2624 Air Park Drive, architect for the project. Uh, just thank you, commissioners, for making this happen. Um, it's a new adventure for all of us, absolutely. Um, one of the things that I'd like to point out is that the project has come a, quite a distance from the initial submittal. U-Haul uh, certainly took into consideration all of your comments and uh, the, the biggest one being the concern about the freestanding mini storage out in the parking lot, that's completely taken off the table. Um, signage has been reduced. The, um, uh, the big display panels that were on the face of the building that Alejandra alluded to, uh, that there were three panels pre previously, there's only an individual that individual panel is approximately 200 square feet where the initial submittal had 600 square feet. Um, and, and that was only two, two sides, the west side and on the north side. Uh, we also uh, removed completely the doors that were on the uh, east side that were uh, items of concern by the commission, completely gone, and we have added landscaping that starts uh, along the east side at the north end, approximately eight to 10 foot deep, and it grows to approximately 20 feet deep at the far south end of the building. Um, commissioners may not be aware, but this project was initially submitted 
Uh, several months back, we uh, submitted a couple of uh, elevation elements to Ryan, uh, who had some objections to several of the items that uh, were ultimately removed. So this has actually gone to three different versions of elevations. And I think in every instance, it's just improved the project, improved the visual uh, that the public will be seeing. So uh, we have uh, Brandon Williams and Brandon from Terrace from U-Haul. They are also in attendance uh, and we'll make ourselves available for any questions uh, that the commission might have. Thank you, Tom. Does the commission have any questions for the applicant? I see Commissioner Blanco. Um, go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, Tom, this may be a question for you or the applicant, but in terms of the trucks that will be parked on site, um, are those generally going to be in, at the center of the site? And, and do you know about how many on average might be parked on site on any given day? Is there kind of a, an estimate on that? We've actually, do I need to raise my hand again? No, you're on, Tom. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, we've actually concentrated all of the U-Haul vehicles on the uh, easterly side uh, along Santa Maria Way to just for better visibility. Uh, the bulk of the parking, uh, though it is not, I don't anticipate it really being used, uh, but based on the number of many storage units, there's like 74 parking spaces. Um, and again, if you're familiar with any type of mini storage, you know, you might have six to 10 vehicles on site at any particular time. You're not going to have all 74 of those spaces. So uh, the bulk of the parking out in the middle of the parking lot uh, is basically customer parking. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Commissioner Dickerson, um, go ahead. Uh, following up on Commissioner Blanco's uh, question, uh, but this time shifting to the west side of the parking structure. Um, I went out there today and took a look, and of course there, are, there aren't, as you just mentioned, there are no uh, uh, vehicles on the west side, but there was question in, in both of the study sessions of the potential of U-Haul parking their vehicles on the west side and using them basically as mobile billboards. Um, is there anything that's going to be done to, uh, if this was approved, is there anything that would be done to uh, make sure that uh, that does not occur and that we don't end up with that Orchid Expressway entrance to the city basically being a large U-Haul mobile billboard signage? I actually, I have to stand corrected on my previous comment. Uh, the initial phase one development for the U-Haul uh, there were designated spots along the perimeter on the west side, also on the east side, that are for the rental vehicles, more for display. Uh, and we do realize that there was a discussion, concern expressed at one of the study sessions uh, because many of the trucks were covered with uh, essentially billboards in the windows. Uh, and those were immediately removed, I think, the day after the Planning Commission study session uh, to clean that up considerably. But all of the parking, uh, the bulk of the parking, I'm going to say two-thirds of it along the west side, is designated as display parking. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dickerson. Any further questions? Any further questions for the applicant? We have Commissioner Seifert. Yes, thank you. Um, may I have a question for Tom Martinez. Uh, Tom, is all the landscaping done at this time? The only portion that is remaining along the street frontages, and actually it showed up in one of the, the northeast corner elevation that Alejandro posted, uh, there was a corner element that was incomplete uh, and it basically is right at the entry of the signal. And the reason that that had not been completed is we, there were, we were installing the accessible uh, ramp, the ADA ramp from the public right of way. 
immediately south of that corner. So we wanted to get that concrete ramp work done before they completed that landscaping. So really it's just that one little corner and then the, uh, the bulk of the planting that is along the east side of the building is still to be completed. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Seifert. Any other questions or comments for staff? Seeing none, well, we can go ahead and move to the, the public comment period. Any, any of you folks in favor or against the project may go ahead and raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged. So I'm um, certain we're gonna have folks um, in the public that wanna comment on the project. I have 21 attendees and right now I have one person raising their hand. Um, if anybody else wants to speak on you all, please raise your hand. Chair, if you don't mind, I will Start, I will unmute them whenever you're ready. I'll start with whoever raised their hand first. Um, so folks, if you can raise your hand now, if you wanna speak on U-Haul, this is the time. So just letting you know. Yes, th th thank you, Ryan. Yeah, let's let, go ahead and uh, go ahead and- uh, Okay. We'll go ahead and acknowledge Ms. Kuykendall. Colleen, we'll let Colleen introduce herself. Hold on there one second. Go. Okay, Colleen, you're on. Hey, can you guys all hear me? Sure can. First, let me commend you all on your learning curve with Zoom. I'm an educator and I coach teachers, so I have been training people how to use Zoom, so you guys are doing awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, it's Kirkendall, and you would not have gotten that right because it's not phonetically correct with the Y in there, so that's okay too. But thank you for having me speak tonight. My name is Colleen Kirkendall. And I am a member of this community, and I have been for over 50 years. I work as an educator in ORCID. And as an educator, the forefront of every decision I make is what is best for my students. As our city's planning commission, I can only hope that at the forefront of every decision you make is what is best for the citizens of our city. The area in question tonight at Santa Maria Way has always been a retail location for as long as I can remember. I strongly believe that the city designed it to be this way and that it should remain as such. Aurora Grande, I feel, is a great example of a town who took that Kmart shopping center and divided it into smaller stores that served to benefit the community. They added a grocery outlet, a hardware store, and a fitness center. I do not believe that this area is well suited for another storage facility. I do believe that it is a great location for retail, which is what it was encouraged and we were moving towards. By approving the request before you tonight, I believe we are opening the slippery slope to closing the door on an opportunity to benefit the community with a shopping center that benefits the neighborhoods, the schools, the parks, the churches, and the businesses that surround it. I'm asking you guys to ask yourselves tonight, what is the best for our citizens of our city? And as a teacher, I will say there are two schools located on Santa Maria Way. I worked at one of them, and I know there's students that walk those streets. I do believe that when you guys design the city, that you did not mean to have storage facilities in that area, which is why it was designed the way it was. I don't believe it's safe to have all those trucks coming and going up and down that street where we have two crosswalks where kids are walking. So I think that we need to take safety into consideration. I think we need to take into consideration the fact that we have neighborhoods that are looking around when they're buying houses at what surrounds them. And nobody looks around and says, oh yay, there's a storage facility a mile down the road. What we're looking for when we buy a house is we're looking for a grocery store. You know, we're looking for somewhere we can rent to and grab diapers, you know, in the middle of the night. We're looking for those kind of things. We're not looking for another storage facility. We have plenty of those. If you want to build those, build them out off Better Avia. That's what it's designed for. So I'm looking to you guys, and I trust you guys. We put you in these positions because we hope that you make the right decision for us. I was kind of a little dismayed when I got on here tonight that this has already kind of gone so far. I almost feel like it's hard to unravel it. But I do feel like I'm, I'm in a position where I could go out and start to get people on my side and kind of tell them what's happening because I feel like it sounds like there's a little gray area there, that it wasn't really designed for that. And it sounds like you guys have the decision-making power to look at it and say, you know, is this what's right for our citizens? Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, Ms. Kirkendall. Um, our next speaker will be Mr. Yeah. Joseph Cahill. Uh, we will have, I, I forgot to mention this, we do have a three minute timer um, on the, on the uh, comment section from the public. So 
With that said, Ryan, if we can um, unmute Mr. Cahill and I'll go ahead and start our, our three minute timer. All right, let's see. Uh, you're on Mr. Cahill. Hello, commissioners and Mr. Chairman. Um, in the past, I have met with many of you um, regarding the development of a self storage facility at 1400 West Bedaravia. Um, that project is nearly complete, probably opening within the next 10 days to two weeks. It's a beautiful facility. And we went through a lot of uh, back and forth when we were developing our facility. I'm the development coordinator for that property. And there was a lot of scrutiny about the project that we developed. And I don't feel like the same scrutiny is being applied to U-Haul. The fact that the C2, it's zone C2, I'm pretty sure, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's been, I know at least one, but I believe two other projects that were denied with the same C2 zoning that were trying to put self-storage in facilities. And so I'm, I'm a little perplexed how this one was seemingly approved. I know it's not completely approved yet, but it has gone on. I believe it um, was a very dangerous move for U-Haul to purchase a property and then try to force self-storage into an area that was not zoned for. There's a couple other things too that um, I'm concerned with. One being the idea that you have a doorway or a, or a garage way that you can pull cars in to inside the building, still running, emitting CO2. And I don't believe that's healthy for people inside that building. And I'm wondering if U-Haul has proposed a ventilation system, some way to eradicate those CO2 emissions within their building. I probably guess that they haven't, but I do think that's something that we sh should consider. Also the parking area, um, I find perplexing. Why have a parking lot at a self storage facility that as Mr. Martinez says, might only have six to 10 people on site at a time. Why have hundreds of spaces out there? It makes me believe that somewhere down the line, that's gonna be spaces used for RV parking, boats, trailers, old cars, which will completely change the appearance of that area. This is the Southern gateway to Santa Maria. It, like you've said, it's right on the border so people entering Santa Maria from the south, that's the first thing they're going to see. That's the impression of our city. I, I don't believe that's a good idea. There are plenty of um, plenty of developments coming. And you guys have probably heard about them, but developments such as the um, owners of the Bandon Dune Golf Course in between Lompoc and Oregon, that's going to drive thousands of people to our neighborhoods. And they're going to... Mr. They're going to come straight into, okay, I'll finish up. They're going to come yes, straight yes. into Santa Maria via the 135. So I just would ask you to reconsider this. There's been plenty of public reaction. And I'll tell you the public reaction that we have on our self storage facility has been tremendous, including a couple people that have said it's the nicest building in Santa Maria. Thank you, Mr. Oh, Cahill. Uh, we do have another hand raised from uh, Mr. Pat Kuzak. Sure, I will get him set up here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cusack, you're on. You have okay. three minutes. Thank you. Hi, Pat Cusack, 2175 South Bradley Road. Thank you for allowing me the chance to talk. Thank you for commissioners I had a chance to talk to in this, this past week. Um, First, I want full disclosure. I, I have um, projects involved in Santa Maria now, the two auto dealerships that we're, we're building and also a self-storage facility that's uh, managed by StoreQuest on Bedaravia Road that's, that Joe mentioned, sl slated to open in, in a week or two. Um, the reason why I wanted to chime in, I, I don't have any problem with phase one. I have no problem with U-Haul, I think being at that location. Um, 
U-Haul as far as the, the boxes and the, the vans and the such, as long as they keep them tidy. I do agree with Joe. It is a highly visible corridor. Um, but what I do have an issue with is I don't think it's the right place for, for additional self-storage. We're all for competition. Um, I, some of the comments that were made earlier is exactly true. In this case, Santa Maria does need more self-storage. That's one of the reasons why a few years ago we jumped into it and decided to, to develop that. I know of at least one, possibly two additional ones. So the more of that that we can have in Santa Maria, I think the better. But I think the location is important. And I think that the areas that um, it is permitted in the CM zoning specifically say mini warehouses. There's a lot of detail that goes into it. And they're identified on the map as far as where the locations are. That's where we went. We feel that... Uh, U-Haul, which is a $16 billion company, so they're the big guys, we're the small guys, I think should have to follow the same rules. And I think the, we also benefit by having more of us in a, in a certain area, just like auto dealerships. When we all get together, people come there because they know they're going to find a good deal and find the car. Same is true of storage. There's 25, 30 acres still available in CM zoning out in that same vicinity that I think would be a far superior site. And I think in, in a sense, it's a fairness, too, to the people that are trying to follow the rules and that are local. The big boys should 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 have the same requirement and they should have to follow the same thing. I know there's a broad interpretation taking place. I just hope that you guys would reconsider that as to whether or not that really makes sense and whether or not there couldn't be better uses there, retail and and uh, shopping and, and again, the, the entry to our city. So that's all I wanted to say. And uh, we appreciate what you guys do. And. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Kuzak. Are there any other members of the community wishing to speak either for or against this project? See any other members of the public? I'm not seeing any other hands raised. Nor am I. We'll go ahead and uh, wait just, just a couple seconds to see if anybody else wants to chime in. Seeing none, Ryan, we'll go ahead and uh, go back to the applicant if he has any response or any rebuttals to any of the arguments that were presented. Okay. Um, all right. You're on, Tom. Uh, yes, Tom Martinez. <clears throat> um, going back to the initial development conversations when you all first approached the city, uh, Mr. Feroz Bari uh, came into the city, that was actually before we were involved, and met with Ryan and I believe Chun, um, and they were actually looking at the, cost, the old Costco building at Stoll and uh, Bradley, which is now Trader Joe's, uh, and they were discouraged from that location, uh, and they then talked about the Kmart, which was um, all indications were that they certainly could do it at that location. The building had been sitting in disrepair, even though Kmart was still open for five or six years after it closed. It even got even worse. Uh, I think what has been done with the proposal of what has been done to date and the additional landscaping and, and uh, materials that are going to be added to the building are a great enhancement to what was an eyesore. And, and granted, retail um, would have been nice, but there were nobody that was interested in that large of a building. And I think that's why uh, U-Haul stepped up. Uh, it is a business model that they have taken. I, I understand that they have four or 500 units across the United States. Uh, not four or 500 units of storage. They've purchased four or 500 Kmart buildings uh, that they're using this same model for. Um, <clears throat> I would be concerned about the comments that didn't be made, the letters that were submitted. I just don't hear this coming from the general public or the neighborhood. Uh, quite frankly, uh, six of the nine letters are partners with Mr. Cusack uh, and or, or associates and employees of him. Uh, the 
public was noticed, obviously, because of the condition you Smith for the, for the neighborhood. Uh, I'm not seeing any comments directly from the neighborhood. It's basically from outside the neighborhood and, and they're all associates of a competing entity, which I think is somewhat a conflict of interest. I don't know if Mr. Uh, Williams wants to weigh in on that. Uh, Mr. Martinez, uh, you said Mr. Williams? Brandon Williams from U-Haul. Okay, gotcha. Uh, uh, addressing one more item where uh, the gentleman, I think it was Mr. Cahill, uh, talked about the trucks and or vehicles inside the building. This is an unloading zone for inclement weather. Uh, large overhead doors, people will back in. Basically, if it's raining, they can then unload, wheel their uh, materials to uh, their storage unit, uh, pull the truck out or their vehicle out. Uh, nowhere in the building code is there uh, requirements for exhaust systems unless they are automotive repair shops. Uh, typically, the only thing that is required is uh, there's some additional ventilation that we put in the overhead doors, in the ceiling of the building, just so that there's nothing that gets um, built up inside the room. Theoretically, it's no different than you parking your car in your garage. You know, you don't leave your car running and close the door inside. So I, we just we just don't see that the concern about leaving the trucks running in there. Uh, I, I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, the other item he uh, mentioned is the number of parking spaces, um, and I would agree. We'd love to not park, not stripe any of the spaces, because we all know that the 75 parking spaces required. Those 75 people are not going to be there at the same time. That is purely a city code requirement, one parking space per 10 units. I, that's, I think that's all I have to add. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Was one of the representatives from U-Haul on? Let's see if anybody from U-Haul can raise your hand. Um, I think they're on as Tom Martinez, so I'm going to unmute. I don't, I don't know which is which here, so I'm going to. Uh, please state yeah. your name. Uh, hello, this is Brandon Williams. Can you hear me? Hi, Brandon. Yes, we can. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, I mean, you know, these Kmart's are, are kind of a business model. You know, what what? It's not just Kmart's. We reuse buildings in general to reduce waste and and things like that. You know, it's more friendly for the environment. They're doing a ground up build. And, uh, we, you know, it cleans up a lot of these neighborhoods where we get by these buildings. And like Tom was saying, you know, that building was in pretty good disrepair, even when Sears owned it. I mean, they didn't take care of the landscaping, the paint, any of that. And it sat vacant, you know, for a while. And retail had their opportunity to get in there. And just, you know. And I, I believe, you know, our, our business model with truck rental and, and, and the mini storage actually, you know, it's good. It's good to be competitive. It's good to you know be competitive with our competitors in that area. And, you know, I don't. I don't foresee any issues with uh, the load unload portion inside the building. Like you know, I agree with what Tom was saying. It's it's just like uh, pulling in your garage at home. You know, there's no ventilation in the garage at home. You just open the door, pull in, turn the car off. And that's basically what they'd be doing. They pull in, turn the car off or truck, and unload into the store. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Any any other? Well, I see another hand raised by uh, Third Tom Martinez. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me lower my hand. Okay, let's see. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Brandon Fronteras. Uh, I also work for you all. Um, I'm on the site every single day as a construction manager, and since. The first day I started there, there was countless homeless people, vandalism, graffiti. Since we've been there and done our job, our diligence, uh, the amount of homeless people we have there now is zero. Uh, graffiti, it happens, but it's maybe once a week we take care of it. 
but our neighbors at CHC, um, we've, you know, come a long way to know them, get to know them. They continuously remind us how much safer they feel, the fact that we're there. Um, because when it was just an empty building, they had homeless people there, them leaving. They have some employees that leave work at seven at night. And ever since we've been there with our security cameras and me walking the site, they feel more protected. And, you know, we, you all like to, you know, keep a, a really good image and, and keep it safe. So I think, you know, that was just another thing I wanted to chime in with Brandon Williams. Thank you, Brandon. You're, you're also Brandon, correct? Correct. Okay. Th thank you. Um, any other member of the applicant team wishing to make a comment? I'm seeing none, Chair. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, close the meeting to the, well, actually, we'll, we'll keep it open and see if the commission has any questions for the public or the applicant. Don't see any, any hands being raised for that. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for discussion. Motion, comments. See any commissioner wishing to make a moment uh, or comment? Commissioner motion. Dickerson. I uh, I I struggled a little bit with this uh, this project. Um, but the main thing I struggled with was that that balance between um, improving and 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 utilizing a space that had been dilapidated for for quite some time. Um, and then the, the, the use of that space uh, and, and what's been chosen for, for the use of the space. Um, I, I take to heart, and I, and I do recognize, I mean, I, I, Mr. Martinez, to the best of my knowledge, is, is correct. Uh, I kind of looked through the different uh, letters that we got, and it seemed like just a cursory look, and about six of the eight or nine that we got were were attached to, to Pat, uh, and, and that's a little disturbing to me. But uh, from from the, from some of the others, though, the, the thought that this 13-acre parcel of retail, which could shift to a uh, to a mini storage, just doesn't sit very well with me. Um, a different development where you have retail sales and stores and maybe a grocery stores, that sort of thing, things that would actually assist the, uh, the, the local community, I, th I think it would just be more dynamic. And I think it'd be difficult to find another pad like that, that, uh, that that opportunity lends itself. Um, I do recognize that this space had been um, vacant for, for quite some time and it had been run down. Um, but, you know, if you're not trying to get one tenant for the entire, the entire footage, then you end up uh, maybe having more opportunities for dividing it up and having, as I said, a more dynamic um, project. Um, I'm consistent with this, this philosophy of also not turning these, these shells into um, many storages. We, Staples came to us, uh, or the state the people who own the, the former uh, Staples space over by uh, um, Home Depot. And uh, I, I objected to that as well. And the problem that I see is that uh, retail is going through a, uh, a metamorphosis. I don't think it's going to disappear. I mean, you're still going to have, you're still going to have developments that have uh, various, uh, as I said, uh, some retail, some grocery, things like that. I mean, it's going to be different, but it's still going to be there. Um, and so my concern is that anybody that finds that they own pretty large uh, spaces may, may start shifting to or may have a desire to shift to uh, mini storage. Um, I, think the, the, I think the fact of the matter is that per square foot, Mini storage probably makes more money than a lot of retail store does, uh, unless you're a very high-end uh, retail. 
Uh, so from that standpoint, it's a good business model to, to, to try to make the gambit to make this shift over. Uh, but it's not terribly good for the community and it's not very good for the community either for, for the general residents or quite frankly for the city as a whole because you lose that tax base. There is no tax base associated with mini storage, but there is with retail. If we open the door, um, this was the argument for the Staples Center before they withdrew it, if we open the door for uh, conversion of this space into um, mini storage, then what do we say to the next property owner down the road? Um, you know, I can think of a number of, of fairly large uh, shells right now that you know, aren't necessarily you know making it making it very well um, throughout the city. What do we say to the next one that says, "Okay, we want to do the same thing"? Um, now we can always say this is a special circumstance and maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. But the reality is it's going to be a tough sell to say, you know, when that guy says, want them, but not us. Um, and so from that standpoint, I, uh, I don't really agree with the concept of turning this into a mini storage. Um, and so it would not have my support. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dickerson. I, I, I thought I had saw I had um, seen uh, Commissioner Seifert's hand, or no? There he is, mm -hmm. Commissioner Seifert. Commissioner Seifert. Yeah, this is a tough one for me too. Um, I live close to here, and the the idea of the, uh, the building being renovated and Tom's drawing some beautiful pictures and landscaping and. That building's been so ugly for so long, uh, and the homeless and the problems and the graffiti, unused, um, and yet uh, the storage. Uh, the, you know, a U-Haul has always been associated with me with trailer hitches and trucks and, and rental trailers and things of this nature, but obviously they changed their business model to storage. My problem is in this COVID environment where we're going to be trying to get back into businesses and trying to reach some new normal where we, uh, you know, we, we have to have businesses. We have to have people that are open and working. Um, th these guys are they're here. They own the property. They've got a model. Uh, and yet we've just not so long ago approved two huge storage facilities that the, the guys are spending tons of money on to build and make beautiful and an area that is owned completely correct for this use. Um, as a commissioner who approved those projects, I thought at that time, well, that's a heck of a lot of storage. Um, <clears throat> we have quite a few storage areas already. Uh, but I thought that, uh, that they were, they were you know, they were asking for it, and I would think about it. We, we've heard from the public. You know, some of the, some of the arguments, uh, Roy Grandy, <clears throat> I don't think Roy Grandy on this project uh, are similar. I think Roy Grandy has freeway access. We have, uh, you know, Santa Maria Way. I, th I think they're a little bit different in that respect. Freeway access is always a premium, and you get to see you, a lot more people see the product uh, when you're on the freeway. Uh, as far as being an eyesore, uh, that I disagree with. Uh, I, I don't think it is an eyesore. Um, these the guys have come in and and really they hurt us. Uh, they hurt me, and they cleaned it up. And from the elevations and the building that Tom's designed, it's a beautiful building, and I'd, I'd love to see it there. Um, I don't know about the argument about storing vehicles and parking them on site. I don't believe this is going to be allowed. I think we have zoning enforcement. I think we have uh, uh, enough in the codes in effect that that isn't going to be a problem. Um, the tax base is a problem. Uh, we're not going to be seeing any kind of revenue from this particular uh, uh, facility. So I'm still looking at this thing in my mind i, I uh, i'm still not quite sure what to do with it uh, we've got a uh, consumer that's gone in and bought a property 
that's the right to do it. I wish it would have been zoned for the exact use that they're using. Uh, now they're making it a difficult decision for this commission uh, because what they're asking for, and they can see that regardless of who's writing the letters, uh, their letters, they've been put in, they're in the record. We don't get a lot of input uh, that I've found in my five years on this uh, commission. Uh, when people do take the time to write a letter, uh, state a fact, come to a meeting, um, I, I put a lot of weight towards those just because they, they made an effort that a lot of our citizens don't. Um, so I'm, I'm still thinking about this one. I'm not sure, I, I'm, I'm not liking the idea of storage. Uh, for that building, uh, but I don't know if retail is going to be a thing of the future. I don't know if a, a box store. I mean, I, these these. That's why we had. That's why Stables came to us and said, "Hey, we can't get anybody to rent our building. What are we going to do with the space?" So it, it it is it is a problem, and I and I think it's uh, the future is going to be a, a little different as far as retail and and how. How we as citizens purchase our items and where we go and what we do. So uh, I, I'd, I'd be very interested to hear what the other commissioners have to say. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Seifert. Any other commissioners wishing to comment? Commissioner Blanco. Go ahead. Yeah. Um you know, I, I, I can I can certainly um, see the viewpoint of, uh, you know, Commissioner Seifert, Commissioner Dickerson. Um, I don't have the long history on the commission to really know, you know, what applications have come before uh, for these kind of facilities. Um, you know, my, my first sort of inclination with this was, you know, it's, it's certainly an improvement. Um, you know, it's been in disrepair and dilapidated for a long time, and it's currently an eyesore. I, I don't... I don't see how it's going to be a, a worse eyesore. I think the project as designed and presented uh, looks very attractive. Um, and, you know, I'm not too surprised that we're looking to do more storage in general. Um, I work in San Luis Obispo and I'm surprised at how many storage facilities are actually getting built um, in San Luis Obispo. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, and so, uh, they tend to be eyesores in general, I think. People don't want us to just see storage, but I think the reality is is that there's a demand for it. Otherwise, uh, they wouldn't be building them. Um, uh, you know, the, the future with where we're at now and, and, and the current health crisis, who knows how the market will react after this is all done. Um, so it is a, it is a, it is a tough decision. Um, I, I, I do want to do what's the best in the interest of the community as well. And I'm certainly very sensitive to the folks in that area that live there, um, you know, uh, but I think the applicant has been pretty diligent in addressing our comments and our concerns. Um, it, it, it looks nice, the site, um, and, um, you know, it, it is a tough decision. I, 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 don't, I don't have um, a real strong um, one way or another sort of opinion at this time. I, th I think it is pretty tough. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm just interested to hear um, what the rest of the commissioners have to say. But uh, I, 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 I totally agree. It's, it's not an easy decision. And in the best interest of the public, uh, you know, is, is really kind of where we should stand. Um, you know, the, the, not having the revenue there, we don't have it now. So uh, we wouldn't be losing anything at the moment but we wouldn't gain anything in the future. So that is a tough thing for the city to, to also look at. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm in agreement with the other commissioners. It's, it's a tough decision and, and one that uh, we shouldn't take lightly. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Blanco. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Any, um, any comment? First, I'd like to say, you know, Tom, Tom Martinez has done a wonderful job in really trying to get this project um, to an approval standpoint. However, I do have to agree with um, the other commissioners that we do have to do what's what's in the best interest of the public. And I really think that having mini storage at this location at this time is not the right move. Um, you know, just the, the tax that we may lose in the future, even though we don't have it now, I think it's really important 
also the zoning it's not really zoned for that and we'd have to make take a leap as a planning commission to, to in our discretion reach that point and this planning commissioner i don't think we reach that level um to to be able to to go to zm when it's zoned as c2 so for those reasons i'm having a hard time reaching a point of approval for this project Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. Um, I've, I've also went back and forth on this project. Uh, I, I think from the onset, I was opposed to the conversion of, of uh, sales tax area to uh, industrial, where we're not we're not getting any tax base. I was consistent with Staples, uh, even even the Davida Kidney Center up on uh, Broadway and Donovan. I think I was the only one opposed to that because we're we're losing sales tax area when the whole shutdown happened here a month and a half ago the first we were i think we were the first city to report we're going to be down six million dollars and, and and the sales tax was going to kill us uh and i think uh commissioner blanco said or i, I can't remember who said that yeah, even though we don't have it now we're, we're going to lose it for sure in the future if we have this use um i think mr martinez has done an excellent job in presenting this to us i i uh, it is it is it is a nice looking building. I've, I've actually been to one of the U-Haul centers in Los Angeles. When, when this was first presented, I thought it was going to be something like that. The one I'm talking about was in Van Nuys and it was, it was, uh, they sold things like moving boxes. It was, it was retail. It was retail. It, uh, it, it may have had a, um, a storage component. I, I didn't see it, but it was retail. And then the yard did have the trailer hitches, the, 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 the dollies and the moving trucks and pickup trucks. Uh, this is a tough one for me uh, that it's gone so far down the road, uh, but, but I, I think I've, I've been consistent with the loss of sales tax area. Um, so I'm still chomping on it. Uh, I guess we'll see when we, when we vote. <laughs> uh, any other questions or comments from the commission? Seeing none, I'll, I'd entertain a motion. Commissioner Dickerson is his hand raised uh, for a motion. Go ahead. Actually, I had a, a question first. If if a motion is going to be made to deny, does Heather want us to um, move this to the next meeting so then staff has a an opportunity to create the motion to deny? I think we would want to if the. I think the, you should have the commission make the motion, and if the commission decides that um, commission wants to deny, then we would recommend continuing it to the next hearing so we can bring back findings for y'all. But we want to make sure it's a result of the whole commission. So, if yeah. I wanted to make a if I wanted to make a motion to deny, would I would I make the motion to deny? But put in there. Uh, but after the vote, if it if it's accepted, that it would be postponed to the next session to allow staff to make that. Or how do we how do we do that? What's the process, Heather? Yes, this is Heather Widom. So you would make your motion to deny. If the motion passes, um, staff would be directed to bring back a resolution denying the project with all findings of fact um, based on what what's been said tonight uh, the planning staff would put together that uh, resolution of denial and incorporate the findings uh, in that in that document okay then I'll go ahead and if, if nobody else any other comments I'll go ahead and make a motion to deny um, permit you to excuse me, U2019-0021 um, and uh, if denied to have it uh, move to the next session so then uh, the proper documentation can be generated. Thank you, Commissioner Dickerson. Do we have a second? A second. It's been seconded. May we have a roll call, please? Uh, uh, uh. Oops. Commissioner Dickerson. Aye. Commissioner Hernandez? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Seifert? 
Aye. Chair Lopez. Aye. The motion carries. I uh, will be continued to the next hearing date for a denial of PD 2020-002. And um, thank you, folks. And that's um, May 20th, just so we have a date certain for folks who are on the line. Um, it's May 20th. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next item, which is our original item number six, which is now item number seven. Uh, and I will I believe, be recusing myself from that. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. And I believe Commissioner Seifert is recusing himself as well. Excuse Correct. me, Mr. Chair. Um, I will need uh, Ms. Hern uh, Commissioner Hernand Hernandez to please uh, briefly state the basis of her conflict. The financial conflict. Does that mean that the um, applicant or someone involved is a source of income to you? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Seifert? I'm a part owner of the property. Thank you, Commissioner Seifert. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, I guess see you guys at our study session tomorrow via online. Yes. We'll see you there, probably with a different background. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. Thank you, Commissioner Seifert. Okay, we'll go, we'll go ahead and uh, move to item number seven, which is the Fairway Commercial General Plan Amendment and Zone Change located at 1223, 1223 Fairway Drive. May we please have a staff report? Thank you, uh, Chair Lopez, and uh, thank you, Commissioners. My name is Carol Dusenhenny, and I'm an Associate Planner uh, and Project Manager for the Fairway Commercial General Plan Amendment and Zone Change at uh, 1223 Fairway Drive. Hi. <laughs> what? Uh, Ryan, can we, can we mute that? Got it. Okay. Sorry about that, Carol. Oh, no worries. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, this is the project location. Um, the site is a 1.3 acre property located at the northwest corner of Fairway Drive and Skyway Drive. Um, it is located in, in a PDM1 zoning district and it is surrounded by the same zoning district. Um, so uses in the area are uh, light manufacturing, one and two story administrative buildings, um, and warehouses nearby, large employers such as Saffron Cabin, Hardy Diagnostics. Um, let me see if my cursor works. Hardy Di Diagnostics is off to the west. Um, Mind Body is off screen to the south. And there are numerous architectural firms and other administrative offices in Fair Sky Park Drive uh, Park, as well as um, other light industrial uses in the surrounding area. So the site is developed with a parking lot and ornamental landscaping that serves the adjacent Frontier Communications building off the west. Um, the project site contains a plan development overlay and any future development on the site will require a plan development permit. Um, the applicant has indicated that they may apply for future development of the site with uh, food or fast food um, amenities to serve the surrounding area. However, as of today, there are no plan development permits um, submitted with the city for the site and no development is proposed as part of this application or part of this request for a zone change. Um, this might, the site might look a little familiar um, as in early tw uh, April of 2019, the Planning Commission reviewed and approved a parcel map uh, to subdivide the project site um, from the larger Frontier Communications property. The final map was recorded later that month and a new assessor parcel number for the project site is being provided by the county assessor. So off to, the, off to the west, you can see Frontier Communications and their, their lot with all the vehicles. This is a view of the site looking northeast from Fairway Drive. Off to the bottom right, you can see a uh, vicinity map just to guide uh, viewers to know where we're looking here. Um, so looking north, you can see uh, the parking lot and uh, trees and, and landscaping. This is looking further down on Fairway Drive, looking north. This is another view of the site. Off to the left is the uh, Frontier Communications Building. And then now we're up on Skyway Drive, looking west. Uh, again, Frontier Communications Building off behind there. And then the 
existing landscaping and parking lot with uh, improvements on there. So the applicant is requesting to amend the general plan land use and zoning designations from the property from uh, light industrial to community commercial for the general plan land use policy map and to uh, amend the zoning map from PDM1 or plan development light industrial to PDC2 which is plan development general commercial. Um, this zone change is to allow uh, a wider range of allowable uses in the for future development of the site, um, which would allow public oriented land uses such as fast food, restaurants with drive through windows, physical fitness centers, or other uses permitted under the C2 zoning district, which we discussed in the previous um, project. This proposed zone change um, would also provide public oriented retail commercial uses for the larger employers in the surrounding area. Um, one thing that uh, is notable is that the nearest C2 zoning district that could accommodate such public serving uses, such as food establishments, is more than half a mile away. So it's the McDonald's at, on Bedaravia Road and Skyway Drive, so it's north of the site near the police station. So this is a, a depiction of the proposed zone change um, showing the current um, or excuse me, the general plan land use designation, which is showing LI, um, light industrial to community commercial. And then this is a uh, depiction of the zoning designation change from plan development, light industrial to plan development, general commercial. Um, excuse me, I'm gonna go back to the slide. Uh, while this new use will have some differences from the surrounding development, Potential uh, future uses under the proposed C2 zoning designation would not conflict with the surrounding uses and would provide an amenity for the workforce and residents in the project. Uh, with that, staff recommends that the Planning Commission take the following actions. My resolution recommend that the City Council adopt a mitigated negative declaration as amended by the proposed project. And by resolution, recommend that the City Council approve general land map, land use map Amendment and Zone Change GPZ 2019-0003. Um, staff has re uh, received five letters of support for the project. All of the letters from the, are from employers in the surrounding area. Um, and the letters express a desire for additional food options within walking distance of their um, job sites. Uh, because currently employees do have to drive out of the area, um, usually to the, to the east, um, closer to May, uh, Broadway. Um, as there is a, they've expressed a, a shortage of um, food facilities in the area. Um, the letters are available as PDF documents on tonight's agenda um, for more in-depth exploration. So this concludes staff's presentation and or available for comment. And I do believe that the applicant is available for questions as well. Thank you, Carol. Uh, does, does the commission have any questions of staff? I, I have a quick question, Carol. I know we're not at the at the PD level yet, but is the is the future use looking at having driveways off of Skyway? Um, I'm I would defer to the applicant on that. They did submit a preliminary site plan, but there's been no um, submittals to the city as of yet for any project specific um, features. Okay, thank you, Carol. Any other questions or comments for staff? Uh, seeing none, we'll go ahead and open the, the meeting to the applicant. Is, is, are they online? I see Mr. Blau, I don't know if he's. Yeah, he's let's on. see. Um, Mr. Blau is the applicant. Um, he's not raising his hand. Are you there, Mr. Blau? Oh. Let's see, here he is. Okay, I'm. would you like me to unmute him, Chair? Yes, please. Okay. Hello, how's that? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. How do you do, Mr. Blau? Uh, Tom, to answer your question, we don't know yet. I mean, one thing, <clears throat> this is a little unusual for us to bring you a zone change and not have a PD going with it concurrently. Unfortunately, with this kind of reuse, None of our prospective tenants are willing to spend the fifty to a hundred grand 
with a cage to process a PD permit, not knowing the zoning's in place. So we hope to get the zoning in place, and then we'll identify, which we hope is going to be two users on the site for, for a fast food restaurant, and probably an extremely fast food restaurant, only because you've got about 4,000 workers that right now are having to get in their car and leave the area, and it is a real mess. It, it, we, we think we could do a project where we'll get a lot of pedestrian traffic from the employers in the immediate vicinity that will do that. But you will see a PD permit, and to answer your question about the um, Skyway, where right now there is one curb cut there. Right. I can't tell you if we'll have one or not in the future. It's an issue that will be discussed with great detail with public works and with planning as we go forward. But the real issue here is we, we see a real need in the area to provide food service, uh, and that's what we intend on doing. Thank you, Mr. Blah. Uh, any questions or comments of the applicant? For the applicant? Uh, seeing none. Was there, there was letters in support uh, Ryan? Yes, that's correct. And all the letters are posted on the agenda. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I do have to ask if any commissioner had any con ex parte communication with the applicant. Uh, seeing no. That was a no from Commissioner Dickerson and no co from Commissioner Blanco. Uh, well, I, go, I don't see anybody, any of the attendees wishing to make a comment either in opposition or for the project? Yeah, we have to see if we, um, just let's open, or when you're ready, open it for public comment, and then... Oh, yeah, um, we're, we're open for public comment. We, I, okay. I, if Mr. Blau is done with his presentation. Okay, yeah, Mr. Blau, I, are you done? Yeah, I'll, unless you have any questions, I'm done. It's, you'll hear a lot more from me when we do the PD permit in the near future. Okay. Yeah, and since there's no no um, questions from the public, either in opposition or um, in support, uh, commission has no questions for Mr. Blau, staff, or anybody, okay? I'll go ahead and uh, close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for a motion on the general plan zone change. Uh, this will require a resolution number starting at 2780. Yes, and the first action, this is Heather Whittem, uh, would be a consideration of the resolution to adopt a mitigated negative declaration. Correct, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Whittem. So we have Commissioner Blanco, who's, I'm going to unmute. Thank you. Well, I, not to make a motion yet, I was just going to make a comment, um, uh, Chair Lopez. I was just going to say that, uh, you know, it, it, it does make some sense uh, for this area um, to have more opportunities for commercial. Um, I think it's, it's, it's begging for it with all the uh, businesses and industrial that we have over in that area. It really does make sense. If it goes that route, and it sounds like, you know, a restaurant, fast food restaurant or something like that would be the, the best use of that location. Um, you know, I, I work in an area where there's a, a very low amount of opportunities and, and um, a variety of restaurants. And so um, I, I can see why people would want that there. So I'm, um, from my standpoint, it seems like a good uh, a good thing to do in that area. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Blanco. I see uh, Commissioner Dickerson would like to make a comment. Can, can we let him make a comment? Ahead. Yeah, I, I just I just wanted to pipe in and say that I agree with Commissioner Blanco on that. I I, um, I think it's a, an appropriate uh, use to uh, uh, or appropriate uh, step towards uses. Um, I think uh, you know, we certainly can take a look at what's being road, um, but I don't see there being any reason not to um, allow to, at this stage to move forward uh, just to allow uh, Mr. Blau to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to see what he can do with those spaces once, once they are readdressed. So 
That's good. Thank you, Commissioner Dickerson. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think there, there, there's a lack of, there's a whole lot of employees down there with, with nowhere to really to go. Uh, I, I thought Aero, uh, CND Aerospace, I, if that's still their name, I think they had a, a cafeteria there at one point. Uh, but other than that, you have, uh, uh, what's the place that, by Mr. Hardy? Uh, Moxie. Moxie Cafe, there he is, <laughs> and McDonald's. So there, there's not much there. Um, the, my only concern would be, and this I know it's not at the stage yet, would be at the at the plan development level with respect to traffic. And Mr. Blau, I'm sure you know those impact fees are going to be uh, uh, be very, uh, very, very uh, robust. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, it, it seems like it it, it it could be a go. Uh, my only concern would be again at the PD point is is the traffic, but uh, that's all I have. So if I'll go ahead and, and open it up to the commission for any other comments, questions, or a motion. Commissioner Blanco. Yeah, I'd like to, uh move that we approve uh, mitigated negative declaration of the e, uh, EI, no, the environmental impact, and a general plan land use map amendment and zone change GPZ 2019-0003 uh, for the site. Uh, from oh, hold on a second. So we, we have two motions that are okay, so the, the mitigated negative declaration will, will have to be a resolution by uh, resolution number 2780. Okay, so I'll, I'll make that one first then. Okay, okay. I move that uh, we approve uh, or we we approve mitigated negative declaration by resolution. What was it? 2780, Tom? 2780. 2780 uh, for this uh, site. Do, do we have a second? I'll second. May we have a roll call? Yes. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Chair Lopez? Aye. Um, and just, just for the record, um, just to clarify for the record, this is a recommendation to the City Council to adopt the mitigated negative declaration because this action will need to come before them as well. Th thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, so uh, the next the next item would be the, the recommendation for the general plan amendment and zone change. So, if anybody would like to make a motion. Sorry, am I on? I don't know if I'm muted or yeah, not. Yeah, no, you're on. You're on. You're on. Okay. Uh, I would like to move that we, uh, is this a recommendation as well? Maybe I should clarify that to City Council, or is this a... Uh... Yes, it is. Okay. And, and uh, it's also a resolution, correct? 2781? Okay, I, I move that we uh, approve resolution 2781, general plan land use amendment and zone change for GPZ 2019-003. Uh, designate the site from uh, industrial use to commercial use. I'll second. Uh, that was seconded by Commissioner Dickerson. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Chair Lopez? Aye. The motion carries and the recommendations for the mitigated negative, negative declaration and GPZ move forward to the city council. Okay, well, we're, we're done with our agenda items, uh, the public hearings of our agenda. We'll go ahead and move on to other business. Uh, item number eight or reports from planning commission and or staff. I can start with staff. Uh, thank you, Chair, Commissioners. Just so folks know, we have a study session uh, tomorrow at 1.30, and the agenda is posted. It will also be an online Zoom meeting. So uh, the link is posted on the agenda, and we have two items on that agenda for tomorrow. We... Um, just to look forward at your calendar 
So we have items for May 20th. We have two items that were continued from tonight's meeting to that date. Um, and then we have um, a study session for May 21st as well on deck. So um, those will be our, our next hearing. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, I saw a new name on, on our screen, Mr. Brett Fulgoni. Thank you for reminding me. And um, yes, we have an, a, a new staff person who's with our Rec and Parks uh, Department, and um, we want to introduce him. And I will um, unmute him if you don't mind yeah, um, and let him. Let's see. And I see oh, him. Here he is. <laughs> and let him introduce himself. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, well, good evening. Uh, yes, my name is Brett Fulgoni, and just wanted to take this opportunity to um, introduce myself as a new assistant director for Rec, Rec and Parks for the city of Santa Maria. And so, um, just wanted to wanted to do that, and uh, Tim, you know, I'm glad to be here. So, well, thank you. Glad to, glad to have you here. Oh, I, I think I'm getting some. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I'll be. Uh, I suspect that. Uh, Alex will be involving me in more, more uh, development-related issues uh, as a, you know, as I've been working with everyone on the planning commission. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Uh, welcome aboard. Uh, I, I, I think Count, uh, uh, Commissioner Dickerson has his hand up. Uh, Commissioner Dickerson has his hand up. Uh, I, I do. Is it okay, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I just, uh, just as a oral report, uh, I just want to say I had a, a meeting with, um, with both uh, or with um, representatives from um, the Public Works um, and um, uh, ComDev and uh, Rex and Park as well um, regarding the trees that had been cut down um, along Broadway. Um, 20 trees, old growth trees were cut down um, to, uh, uh, to um, basically redo some of the pavement and sidewalk. Um, I, uh, I had heard from other people and, and I have, it's my own feeling as well that uh, I would have hoped we could have done something differently because it takes a long time to get that type of growth um, in that downtown specific plan uh, corridor. Um, so after the discussion, there was an agreement that any future um, trees that are going to be uh, the, that uh, need to be uh, dealt with in that in that corridor, Main Broadway, uh, for downtown specific, uh, that there might be a different uh, method uh, where more stakeholders are brought in to probably and try to talk about alternative methods of of dealing with the trees rather than just felling them. Um, of the 45 trees that were in that uh, in that section uh, south uh, South Broadway, uh, 20 trees were, were brought down. So that's 40 percent. That's a that's a pretty big that's a pretty big uh, thing. So in any case, uh, I just want to let you guys know about that uh, and anybody listening and watching uh, online uh, that um, uh, that there was concern and that uh, hopefully. Uh, it will be dealt with in a slightly different way in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dickerson. Uh, I just wanted to thank Ryan, uh, Heather, uh, Rhonda from the city manager, I'm sorry, from uh, yeah, city clerk's office for, for all their hard work and putting this together. Ryan, it, it, going back from not connect to being able to connect our very first trial, <laughs> I, I think this this went okay tonight, and and, and kudos to you and to, to Heather and to and to Rhonda, and to the to staff, the pros, absolutely professionals. I all the presentations were, were great and and efficient, and um, I, I really I was looking forward to tonight. And after we got into it, maybe not so much, <laughs> but but I think I think that uh, we did okay, and, and I'm looking forward to hopefully we can continue this as needed, and and maybe get back into the chambers even sooner. <laughs> it was a team effort and thanks to the clerk's office um, and Heather and Kathleen. Oh yeah, Kathleen. Oh, how can I forget? She's, I yeah. see her right there. Good job, Kathleen. <laughs>
She's muted. Um, okay, so with nothing further, any other questions or comments from staff or, or, or the commissioners? If not, we're adjourned to tomorrow. Adjournment is at 8.50 p.m. Thank See you. you.